Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. In case you're wondering, I'm Solange. This is still 4F Beauty. Yes, the channel is still going, even though I haven't posted for hell a long time. And hopefully you are watching me in black and white, which means you'll miss the majesty of the beautiful colour of this fan. Beast! Love Alyssa. Anyway, today I'm collabing not with Alyssa, but with an equally a fabulous person. I am collabing with the beautiful Alexis from Haute Modesty. It's uh, our monthly retro review. Hey, it's a retro review. And this month, Alexis chose the Colourpop X Raw Beauty Christie collab at Forest site. So, if you want to find out exactly how well this little beauty performed, or not, which colours I chose, and most importantly, what this looks like in a glorious Technicolor, then my friends, as ever, you, yes, you have the best seat in the house. It's time to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and get comfy, because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Wow, long time no chat, huh? Um, I'll, I'll get into reasons why when I'm doing my makeup but this is a collab with beautiful Alexis uh, it's our monthly collab obviously we skipped January um, and it's a retro review and it's using I've actually not used this on screen yet but I have used it a couple of times now in real life if the lighting is different by the way as well as my strip lighting behind the camera. I've now got a little mini ring light over there trying to illuminate this side a bit more because I'm aware that with the daylight over there sometimes this corner can look a bit dim so let me know if you notice any improvement with the lighting. But the palette concerned is the At Forest Sight which was the Raw Beauty Christie collab that she did with Colourpop. Now this is the I'm sure you all know what this looks like. I mean, it's like it's a bloody new palette, is it? But what I did know, the first thing I thought when I saw it is how similar this is to Jeffree Star's Androgyny palette. I'll put a picture of that up over here. But his Androgyny palette has got a soft gold. I guess you could kind of call that a soft gold, just there. Then it's got a, a neutral sort of, almost the perfect contour shade for me as it happens. Um, which I guess that would be the closest, it's not quite because it's a bit more pink toned. It's got an orange, it's got a bronze shimmer, this hasn't got a bronze shimmer but it has got black with bronze shimmer in it. It's got a chocolate brown. Um, it's got the androgyny shade which is the mauve which I suppose if you combine those two together it would make the mauve it's got the bright red fetish and then it's got a khaki green a deeper green and a bottle blue so I mean it's not a dupe it's not a dupe at all but in terms of overall feeling it reminds me very much of the androgyny palette which is great because obviously 
you know, I, I've stopped using my Jeffrey stuff on screen. Um, I have depotted all of his newer ones, everything from um, Blood Sugar right the way through to Cremated, which is the last one of his that I bought. Um, and I've got those. I've got one with all my favourite shades together in one palette. And then I've got the others all combined in sort of shade order. So I've got all the blues together, all the pinks together, etc. Um, and I do sometimes use those on pick collabs where the importance is the picture, not the palette you're using. But the Beauty Killer and the Androgyny ones, when I tried to depot them, they were just so old and so dry, they just kept breaking, so I ended up dumping all of those. And I found I was actually really missing the Androgyny palette, so I'm, I was really pleased when I picked this up at how much it reminded me of Androgyny. Anyway, um, obviously I should talk more about Alexis towards the end of the collab, like always. Um, I do try and keep the main part of the collab, me wittering and updating you and talking about the actual makeup. Bear with, I may be a little bit clunky because it's been probably about three months since I last filmed. I'll, I'll get into why on camera. Um, so yeah, please forgive me if I'm a little bit clunky. I've already filmed this twice yesterday and one of them I didn't like the look that I did and one of them I didn't like my presentation so I'm starting again today. This is my third attempt at this collab. Um, it's my own fourth being out of practice I suppose. But this does remain a teaching channel so I am going to be talking you through um, the stages of applying the makeup and talking about how well or otherwise the shades perform. I'll um, I've still got that nervous twitch where I rub the end of my nose. When I do that, you are very zoomed in to just my eyes. It does mean when I'm looking down to add more pigment to a brush or to clean a brush, you do get a lovely shot of my hairline. You're welcome. Um, I just think it's a small price to pay for being able to see what's going on, especially if your eyesight's not that great and you're watching me on a mobile which is how I watch people when I'm looking at their films. I'm going to insert a clip just now which will be very up close and personal, just of my eyes, where I talk you through the difference between hooded and deep set eyes. Although they appear very similar, they are different. And the way that you apply makeup in order to get the best initial result and the most longevity from it um, there are differences and I will talk you through those because I even see big beauty gurus saying they've got hooded eyes and I'm looking at them thinking no love you've got deep set eyes. Uh, Sammy the Sloth Straw is having a little bit of a holiday today. This is a mug that my wonderful brother-in-law got me for Christmas. Shh, there may be gin in here. Uh, there isn't gin in here. There is uh, iced coffee in here. So, but yes, brother in law got me that and a little stuffed sloth. And mother in law, one of the presents she got me was a Welsh bomber cheese. And of course, my nickname is Bomber for those of you who don't know. I'm part Welsh. And it was a gin and tonic flavoured cheese. And I love cheese and I love gin and tonic, so it's fair to say that my, my in-laws know me very well. But then after this length of time, I guess they really should. I'm blethering. Right, okay, here's the clip where I talk you through the eye shape. Once that's done, I'll be here at the other end of it applying some colours to my eyelids. I will see you at the other end of this clip, basically. Now, um... My eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. 
I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over mm -hmm. with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid I'll close my eye. You can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay. These these dark circles, they are, oh, they are real today. Hence the need for iced coffee rather than an energetic drink. Right, I'm going to start off with a fluffy brush. This is one of my Spectrum brushes. Um, it doesn't give you a number on it, annoyingly, but it's it's fluffy and it's loose because I want to blow the colour out. Basically, whatever the width the head of the brush is. That's how far it will blend colour out. So if you've got smaller eyes, start off with something you know, more appropriate to your eye size. 
Right. Oh, God, the temptation. Because this has two of my favourite eye looks in it. It has a mauvey, black currenty lusciousness. It has grains. I haven't done my eyes for a very long time. This is so difficult. Right, I'm going to go into old growth. Oh, I forgot what the kick up is like on this. I'm just going to tap back off into the pan. Now, hold the brush right at the very end. And if the handle is long enough, brace it against your palm so you get less wiggling at this end. Just means you don't put too much pressure on your eyelid. Because, you know, my eyelids move. I'm 47 years old, I've lost over 200 pounds. My eyelids move. But I know slim teenagers who've got exactly the same issue. It's just genetics. So what we're going to do, we're going to ignore the windshield wiper, which is what all these young, lovely, taut, eyelided people do. And we're going to do the Viennese waltz. Now this consists of natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. The reason we do this is it very gently manipulates the lid in one direction and then in the other. So that if it does fold over itself, as it will do when you use the windshield wiper, you don't get those telltale stripes barcoding effect. Okay. I always start at the outside edge because if it does deposit too much pigment it's much easier to blend it out when your nose is not in the way. So I'm going to start about halfway between my natural crease and my brow and I'm just going to start applying this colour. So how's your day been? It's been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't, I really hope that tomorrow is a better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day, well, then I hope it's as fabulous as you are, darling. You can see this, this I mean, that's just one dip with the brush and that has blended out so nicely. Just go back in and pick up some of that kick up. Just to... Deepen that shade of tad. Right, so where have I been? Oh dear, get comfortable folks. Those of you who are long-term viewers will remember that I've been having issues not just with my usual spinal arthritis and fibromyalgia and Peripheral neuropathy and allodynia and all that wonderful stuff that comes with being in chronic pain. I guess chronic pain syndrome as well. Oh, I never list that. I just all the time I've listed everything else that I've got. I just think it's pretty obvious I've got chronic pain. So there really is no point hammering it home by going, "Oh, I've got chronic pain syndrome." <laughs> Um, I'd been struggling with my legs. I had a bad reaction to a painkiller that GP tried me on. Summer two years ago, as in the dreaded 2020. Um, where all of a sudden I developed lymphoma, lymphedema, where my legs from the knee down suddenly swelled up like a pregnant woman's and I was, I was just I was storing it was so painful it felt like my skin was going to split so I spoke to the GP and uh, he said right okay you've only been on these tablets like less than a week he said come off them just stop them because they're obviously not not going to do you any good okay, I'm just going to clean this brush off. The way I do it is I use a microfiber cloth 
and just swirl the brush on the cloth. I used to use colour switches but they're far too harsh on your brushes, especially if you've got natural ones. Um, this is a synthetic brush but even so I, I don't use colour switches anymore. You don't have to use a microfiber cloth, you can use an old flannel or an old tea towel or very often I use the leg of my pyjamas if they're due to go in the wash that day. So yeah, so I came off of them. But I went up to visit my mother-in-law and she'd got something, some weird flowering shrub down her drive because she's got quite a, a small car, she's got a, a little Kia and of course I've got a family sized car so when I park on the drive when you open the driver's door if you're not right at the top of the drive where it's wider whatever plants are there in the summer end up falling into your car basically and this fell against my leg and instantly brought me up in a horrific blister which was quite painful but I was just treating it like I'd just, I'm used to my skin reacting badly to bugs and bites and things. Um, I'm just going to... which of those two is darker? Okay. So I was just seeing which of the two shadows that I'm looking at using are darker of the two. So I'm going to go into Amanthia with the same brush. I'm going to pick up as little as I can. It's quite a strong black current colour. And I'm going to come down to my natural crease just above it and repeat the action I did here. So It got really started to look bad and it was getting warm and I'm like, okay, that means infection. Uh, you all know it was like 2020 trying to get in to see your doctor. I finally managed to get an appointment and the doctor said, yep, you've got cellulitis. Oh, great, thanks. That's all I need. So they gave me some antibiotics and basically sent me away and I've been fighting it ever since and then the cellulitis spread to my other leg and I've put pictures up in the past of what the legs are like I'm not going to do that to you now because it's you don't need to see that um, And I've just basically been fighting it ever since because the problem that I've got is the blister turned into an ulcer because obviously I couldn't get in to see the nurses each week and have them or even get into the doctor and have him look at it each week so I went you know I was, I was having to keep sending photos in and fight to get antibiotics and because it was like, you know, have a week with antibiotics, have two weeks without antibiotics, have a week with antibiotics, have two weeks, you know. The blisters turned into ulcers. This is looking a bit patchy this side, but I do have issues just here and here where I get very, very dry patches, but I'm going to go over it with a deeper colour in a minute anyway, so I'm not overly fast. If I wasn't going over it with a deeper colour, what I would do is pick some colour up and apply it by tapping rather than blending. To help build, and I'll just continue doing that until I build the colour up to what I wanted it to be. But as I said, I'm not really worried about that because I'm going over it in a minute anyway. So, um, yeah, the problem was, because I now had the lymphedema in my legs, the ulcers were never drying up, because the ulcer was an open wound, 
which means the lymphedema had somewhere to drain from and I've basically been fighting it for the last sort of 18 months. Then we went through the stage of they tried compression bandaging to see if they could push the lymphedema up and away from the ulcers so the ulcers could heal. So we tried the strapping first, the sort of velcro strapping. Problem was because my lymphedema moves a lot quicker than most people's, literally within 10 minutes the strapping was needing to be tightened up again. Which was fine when hubby was here, but when hubby wasn't here, I physically couldn't bend over with my back to do more than the top couple of rows, so it really wasn't doing any, any use. Um, and in fact, I did actually fall down half of my stairs one morning because I was getting up, and where the strapping had slipped so much down my foot my foot sort of slipped inside the strapping and I just went. You can imagine what that did to me. Right, I'm changing to this very, very tiny brush. This is the My Precise Crease from My Kit Co. 1.20. This is one that I got in one of my rocker boxes. I love it for precise detail work. And I'm going to go into PNW, which I'm guessing is Pacific Northwest, which is the blue. I was going to go into Let It Rain, but I don't think I really want to use glitter on the outside edge today, or mica. I'm tapping off, and then I'm going to do right on the corner here, a little tiny circle initially, and then flick it up to make a fake wing, and then just bring it, I'll see how far I fancy bringing it along. So, anyway, yes, this fallout doesn't bother me. I do my foundation afterwards. I'm just going to do it onto the outer third of my mobile lid. Let's get that. It's a great way of, if you're learning how to do winged liner, this is a great way to start because you can do this and then you can follow it with your, with your liner afterwards. Or if you're having a time when your eyes are particularly sensitive, which mine are at the moment, it saves you having to put a liner on that might smudge around your look. Anyway, so they decided that yeah, this strapping wasn't going to work. You know, basically after I fell down the stairs I was terrified to wear it on my legs anyway. So they decided to get the district nurse to come in to me because I can only drive when hubby's there to help me in and out of the car and to get me to wherever I need to go from the car to wherever because my mobility has got so bad 2020 screwed me mobility wise because obviously I wasn't going anywhere I was I was driving us to the shops to go and get our food shopping but Chris was going in and I was staying in the car because of, you know, self-isolating basically. So 2020 basically screwed what little metabolism, what little mobility I had, I lost because I wasn't doing more than just pottering around at home. So 
so you know it's got so bad now I can't physically lift my legs into and out of the car unless Chris is there to do it for me because my back is so painful and I think the arthritis has now gone down into one of my hips as well because it's starting to feel the same way as my spine which is just great so they said we'll get the district nurse into you because obviously that meant that the only days I could get down to the doctors was a Monday when Chris is off work because his weekend is Sunday Monday of course I'm not over on a Sunday and if they were going to do compression bandaging that had to be checked every day it didn't necessarily need to be changed every day depending on how much the lymphedema had moved but it definitely needed checking every day you couldn't just be left and it wasn't something Chris was allowed to do because it could cut circulation to my feet which would cause me more trouble so the district nurses started to come in the first one was shocked and went are you really 47? yes yes I am you don't look it thank you very much very nice got a pad here with some micellar water on that I'm gonna neaten this edge up with. Yes I could use tape but the way I see it is if the tape is sticky enough to stop the powder getting under the edge of it then it's gonna be pulling this skin too much. Now I always, regardless of brand of um, eyeshadow, I always, if I'm putting a shimmer on, wet the shimmer. But you never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush, you always go in with a dry brush. And I am going to go into Evergreen. Both sides of this brush and then I'm just using this Makeup Obsession Fix Fit because you know the only ones that I actually use on my face are my Gerard Cosmetics ones I'm just gonna grab a mirror so I can see what I'm doing I like these because of the point you can get right into the corner. Yeah, so the district nurses came in and they applied the compression and I took photographs of just after they'd gone and at regular intervals through the day. Literally within five hours, the compression, the lymphedema had shifted so much that the bandages had slipped down my leg, had bunched round my ankle, were cutting off circulation to my foot, and rubbing the skin off around my ankle. Right, I've just cleaned and dried the brush and I'm going to go back in again to Evergreen and do the same with the other eye. Now with the other eye, where this got pulled around when I was four or five years old, at the Ophthalmic Hospital, I've got super, super deep creasing just here. 
so I have to break my own rule about not pulling the lid out otherwise this pigment gathers loosely in the crease and then as it dries up through the day it ends up falling into my eye and down my face I will show you the method that I use so I do as little additional damage as possible do not pull your lid out unless you absolutely have to so I put my finger here gently stretch it out only as far enough as it takes to flatten the creasing don't pull it out round the ear roll and I apply and smooth the pigment over and then gently put it back and then do the rest of the eye same way that I did this one and you can see how much more this side moves in comparison how much looser this lid is so yeah um, so after about three days of this the, the, one of the more senior district nurses came out because I had like a different nurse each day almost she took one look and went I'm not, I'm not putting that back on that's going to cut circulation off to your feet it's going to do more damage than good. However, what they told my surgery was that they were taking me off the books because I could drive every day and therefore didn't need home visits. Really? Right. I'm going to pause you while I put some foundation on and other base products and I will be back to finish off my eyes with you. I will have to wait a while before I continue the story with you. You will find it completely seamless. So I'll see you Oh, right after this wibbly wobbly bit, I guess. Hey, my lovelies. Okay, I have soap browed my brows, obviously, into position. I get a lot of people asking how I do my brows, and I then get a little brow brush, and I choose a shadow either complementary to or one that I have already used on my eyes so I think I'll actually go into hmm. I think I might go into homegrown which is actually a chocolate brown and then all you do you very gently fill the brows in. Now, the reason that I like doing it like this is because the soap brows are slightly sticky when you first do them. So by topping them with a powder you set them into place. But because they are slightly sticky, they grab onto the powder. And this way, you don't have to have a crap ton of pomades going out of date in different colours and different shades. Because you can just use one of the powders from the palette you've been using. And if you do use one that you've already used on your eyes, you know your brows are going to be a perfect match to your eye look. And to me, it's just a really nice, quick, simple way of 
of completing your eye look. I mean, to me, that looks great. I love it. I'm really loving this sort of, it's, it's, I think the official term for it is laminated brows. I think that's what they call the soap brow look. Um, I wouldn't know, so I'm just getting any excess soap off of the thing. I actually, because I was using a Colourpop palette today, instead of my usual pink honey, I used the um, Colourplop, Colourplop, Freudian slip. Colourpop Clear Feather Effect Styling Wax. It's basically a clear soap. Does the same job. Actually, I've found that the pink honey holds them better for longer. But I'm not going anywhere today, so I'm not overly concerned about how well it holds its colour. This is one of my brushes that have got these in the handles, which I could play with all day, but it's this one. And I am going to dip into I'm going to dip into Amantia, which is the black currant. I'm just going to run that tight along the lower lash line. When my I've got very sensitive eyes anyway, I always have had. Um, and one of the side effects of fibro is watery eyes. So I very often can't put anything actually in my waterline. But by doing this under your lashes, you still get that finished look without irritating your eyes too much. So if you also struggle, that's a bit of a tip for you. Try just doing it under the lashes instead of doing the waterline itself. And then I have got another one of my yay, brushes. This is just a fluffy one. I'm going to dip into Old Growth, which if you remember was the first colour that we used up here. I'm just going to use that to really gently buff out that lower lash line. and really soften it. Give it a nice smoky, smudgy look. Yes. I like that. I like that a lot. Right, now. got Kaleidos Mars Melter, the original version. Uh, it arrived broken but I repressed it. You can see it's got shifts of green to pink almost. This is a really cheap old lip brush that I've had for probably 20 years now. I'm going to pop some of that just up under the tail of my brow because apparently folks your brows suffer the same issue with gravity as other parts of your body do and by adding just a little bit of brightness under the brow there it gives you an illusion of lift you don't have to use um, shimmer you can just use a lighter uh, matte if you don't want to, you know, probably go for it. And then I'm going to go in a corner. And I like to bring it along under the tear duct. 
just blend it in under the eyes. This just gives a little bit of a brightness to that inner corner because we all have, regardless of how perfect you are, what skin tone you are, we all have dark patches here and here simply because of the way that our skull is. Um, so by adding a little bit of brightness there just gives you a more awake, more youthful look. Right lovelies, I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to pop some of this highlight onto other areas of my face. I'm going to do some mascara. I'm going to put some lippy on and uh, do something with the hair. And I'll be back for my finished look once again, my darlings, for you. Breaking news. It'll be instant. Ooh. Scientists make major breakthrough in quest to develop nuclear fusion, raising hopes of virtually unlimited low carbon energy supplies. So long as they haven't got Homer Simpson at the controls, I'm sure we'll be fine. See you right now. I am back. Okie dokie. Obviously I put this. Really? Shush. Obviously I put this over the rest of my face. The mascara is a little mini Too Faced Better Than Sex that I've got a sample of. And the lippy is a Fenty Thick, T-H-I-C-C. -C. So tiny. Anyway, setting spray choice of today is the Rose Scent Slay All Day, which they initially did in collaboration with... Nikia Joy. So, this, my darlings, is my finished look with the At Forest Sight palette. What do you think? Do you like? Do you not like? Would you have chosen these shades or would you have chosen different ones? Have you noticed any difference to my lighting? Is it better? Is it worse? What do you think? Let me know. Interested to hear. Um, Right, time to tell you a little bit about the lady that I'm collabing with. Uh, her name is Alexis. She goes under the channel Haute Modesty. She's a wonderful woman. She's so kind, so thoughtful. There's a couple of times when I've had to push collabs back because of pain where I've not been able to record. Um, and she's been completely understanding, never once has she made me feel bad about... Because obviously, I mean, she's she works full-time as well in the medical field. So she has to fit her recordings into evenings and weekends. So for me to suddenly go, <laughs> you know that film we got planned, can we move it? It's going to throw her up completely, it's going to throw all of her plans up in the air. Never once has she made me feel bad about that. Not once at all. By the way, that's a pathetic flip. What do you think? I finally got a Beast fan. Um, sorry, I just got hot and needed to... She, she really is such a lovely woman. She does a variety of different things on her channels. Um, as well as makeup, she does a lot of unboxings, she does a lot of giveaways. Um, I just, I really, really enjoy watching her channel and I learn from her as well because where she is in the medical field, when she gets skincare and things in uh, subscription boxes, she can give you sensible information about it. For example, it was through her that I found out if you've got a vitamin C element to any of your serum then it should be in a dark bottle or kept in its box because UV degrades vitamin C and I'd been using this serum which didn't come in a box and was in clear glass and it was a vitamin C and I'm like 
So basically the last six months I've been using this, only the first month was it actually doing anything. So you, you can find out all kinds of really helpful information from her like that. Um, also, I still don't know how she managed to put makeup on without getting it all over her hijab. I get it all over my hair. There is no way in the world I would have to have a hijab for putting the makeup on. And then I would have to change it into whatever the day's hijab was. Because you know, I'm going to have foundation, powder, all kinds of stuff. All over it, if it was me. But then I'm a klutz. And she's a lady. Very much so. Um, so one of the reasons that I enjoy clubbing with her is that I know that if my god kids are watching and go across to watch her film, they're not going to be exposed to foul language. You know, they're... they're I don't have any worries about them going across to her channel and seeing something or hearing something they shouldn't, although as they're getting older they could probably teach me a swear word or two, or new ones anyway. So once you've done all the good things that you would do for me, as in liking, commenting and maybe even sharing the video, checking you're subscribed making sure your notification status is still marked as on. Once you've done all of those good things for me, I'm going to need you to go across to Alexis, enjoy her film, and do the same to her. And if you're not already subscribed to her, why on earth not? She is amazing. She really is. You're, if you enjoy my films, you'll enjoy her films. And if you are here from Alexis's channel, if you are a wildflower, visiting one of my 4F babies. Hi, hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed this film. I'm not normally as stumbly and ummy as I am today. Uh, uh. <laughs> as I said, I, I haven't filmed for about three months, so I am slightly out of practice. But this is, this is pretty much an indication of what you'll get on my channel me blethering about all kinds of everything, some interesting, some not, some important, some not, but I'm told I have a very soothing voice, so, um, yeah, if you enjoyed this, it'd be lovely if you'd like to stick around and see some more, super easy to do, you hit the red subscribe button, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that someone at YouTube will actually put the right plug in and make sure you get them because I don't always get my notifications from channels um, I've got mine set to all they keep getting put back to personalized it's so frustrating it's like it used to work why didn't you leave it alone why do you tinker with it if it works don't bugger about with it okay yeah, thanks for that. Um, and if you are new here, whether you are a wildflower or you tripped over me some other way, I've got an awfully large backside, yes, but I also have an awfully large back catalogue of films you can watch. I've got all the preceding collabs with Alexis, I've got my pick collab, which is the photo inspiration collaboration challenge. Um, I've got other challenges, I've got tags, I've got unboxings, uh, tutorials, product reviews. I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to find something that interests you. So as I've said, for what feels like forever, grab a drink, grab a snack, push your feet up, pick a playlist, get comfy with your coffee and your custard cream or your your iced tea and iced biscuit and just chill out for a bit have some me time catch up some of my films right my lovely ones as ever all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I, well, I'll see you next time. And hopefully this time, 
won't be as long as a break between films. Bye for now.